All right, what's up, family? It's your girl, Jen Ether, and you are back with another episode of The Report. Oh, the crowd goes wild. All right, let's get straight into it. Today, by request from Jamie Stevens, shout out to my fam, Jamie Stevens. She's over on uh, Facebook. Go follow me on Facebook if you haven't. IG. Of course, YouTube and my newest platform that I've been tearing up with these dance moves and this lip sync and shit and doing a little bit of acting just so y'all can get a full perspective of what I bring to the table just as being fucking Jen Ether. Yeah, I mean, the greatness of Ether because I'm the shit. So I'm doing a little bit of everything on each platform. So go check me out on everywhere. TikTok, Facebook, IG, YouTube. You'll get a little, you'll get a well-rounded perspective of who I am as a person because I go deep, deep, deep. You know what I mean? I'm a Gemini, well, I'm a Taurus slash Gemini cusp. So, I'm basically three people wrapped into fucking one person. You know what I mean? The Taurus, and then I got the two twins that like to come out and play. So, definitely you would want to go check every single platform out because I'm doing different shit on each platform. I'm just, I, I used to try to do the same, I don't know, it's, it's weird, but basically each platform, because they're kind of catered to different things, like TikTok allows me to be creative and show the fun side, so that's where y'all gonna see that side of Jen. Now on YouTube, that's where you're gonna catch the new, new, newest thing I'm doing is the master class, where we're gonna break down the masters of their crafts, and we're gonna speak on what they've done or how they've gotten to where they are on, from a spiritual point of view. So that's gonna be on YouTube and IGTV. And then of course, we're gonna have the readings running on Facebook and on YouTube. All right, so this reading family, this is about whatever past life, this is basically about the karma collected from a past life. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tap into this past life and see which past life most affected you for this current lifetime and what the karma is that's popping up in this current lifetime. And then at the end, we'll see what you need to do to clear that karma so you can move on and be done with it. You want to come back here and have to deal with that shit, you know? All right. So give me a, give me the storyline on my viewers' past life, please. Let's just see what happened. First thing we want to do is see what happened in this past life. This is a collective reading, so you're going to have to take the messages as they resonate. Everything will not be able to resonate with you. If you want to tap in deeper to this uh, subject matter, just hit me in the comments. Uh, for YouTubers, go down to the description box or comment. Let me leave a comment saying that you want a reading, and I will send you the information on how to receive a personal reading from me. That's where we can really tap in and see what's going on. Give me three more cards for this past life, the story of this past life. I'm feeling like this is definitely has something to do with a relationship. Now, this is from your perspective. Remember, we want to see what you may have done. Because whatever you, whatever happened within this past life, you're dealing with that karmic debt right now. So you're seeing things as a result of what was ha what happened in the past. Okay, so first things first, your overall energy. We got the eight of staffs for your overall energy. The eight of staffs. So the eight of staffs talks about love messages. Okay, so really, what it's looking like from where, what I'm just looking at the whole spread and how the cars are, you know, standing out to me, where they're positioned. So what I'm seeing is, you got this eight of stats, right? And he's casting out these, you know, throwing out these love. These are messages of love, passionate messages, right? But while you were throwing out passionate messages, look how this looks. Hold up. Let me give you how this actually looks on the board for me. So it's like in the past, this was in your past position. There was a relationship that you were in. This is your soulmate. This is my soulmate twin flame card. So there was definitely a divine partnership that you were involved in. But you, it came to an end. Now, I believe this came to an end because you were not... <sighs> here it goes. Damn it. Okay, here we go. Now, you see, this is your partnership. This is the end of it. This is your overall energy. Now, you're not sending these messages like this. 
into your own partnership, showing love or passion to your partner, which is why if you would have been doing that, then this card don't exist. You just got, bang, overall energy, me sending these messages to my love partner. But because you're faced the opposite way, you, this is your love, this is your relationship, but you're sending messages out elsewhere, it caused this death. So for a lot of you guys, you could be dealing with, ooh, I really need a better setup, but don't worry, guys. I got the uh, tripod coming. It should be, be here by tomorrow, so a lot of this ghetto-ness is going to be done. You know what I mean? I can't take this shit no more. You feel me? But anyway, so... So, it's looking like a lot of you guys are dealing with uh, maybe, I feel like, uh, unfairness when it comes to relationships. There could be someone that you really, really uh, like, someone that you're really, really into, but it's just not working out. Uh, I'm feeling like, because we're talking about karma, I'm feeling like you're trying to talk to this person and they're sending out messages somewhere else or they're not really paying attention, attention to you. Now, if you're currently in a union with someone, then this person that you're in a union with, even though they may be sending messages out elsewhere and not showing you the attraction, the thing is, is that it is a soulmate of yours. This is a soulmate, but you guys are playing out this damn karmic cycle. So because you did this in the past life where you neglected the, the uh, soulmate connection and were shooting off messages elsewhere looking for other partners, because that happened now in your current life, whether you're in a, a relationship or a partnership with a soulmate or you just see someone to be a soulmate, but they don't really, they're not giving you the same vibes. It's because of this. It's because of what happened in a past life. So it wouldn't be until this karmic debt got cleared out that even you two would be able to come together or... A lot of times, like, maybe you're not supposed to come together. Maybe sometimes your your karmic debt is literally just that. Like, the thing is, the thing with karma, y'all, it's not always, it's not always about, like, we think karma, like, it's a punishment. So, this is the reason why I'm saying that. You may not be with this person in this lifetime, right? Because if this was karmic debt, karma's not always about, oh, you did it to them, so now they're doing it to you. Da ha ha, payback. Smack in the face. No, that's not what it's about. But it's about the Akashic records. It's about us, our souls, coming to this planet to experience life. As a soul, this is one thing we have to realize. As our souls, before we got here, I'm talking about before we got here the first time, right? Before any, any, before we did even our first life, we were literally spiritual beings, which means we had no understanding or a concept of what it meant to feel human shit, like human emotions. We didn't know what love was. We didn't know what the loss of love was. So our job as spiritual beings, remember, we're gods and goddesses. So as a god and a goddess, you're supposed to be equipped with the knowledge of, the, of everything, infinite knowledge, right? Now, of course, we're not the god, the goddess. So... We go through different, like, we're not the one who thought this whole thing up and created us. No. So our process is going through these different levels, different lifetimes, and we have to go through different things so our soul can actually just experience it so we can become a wise soul. So this is why I'm saying that you may not be getting back with this person. This could be just something like you had to experience, like you already experienced the end of the coin where you were the giver of the neglectfulness, but now you have to experience for your soul's growth. You have to experience the other side of that coin so your soul can come, can go back with all of that information. Like, okay, I got this side and I got this side. Then you'll be coming down and getting some more lessons, all right? So, then we got the king of stats in your future. And this is in the past now. We're going back into the past life. So, you were sending messages out to this king of staffs. And it's like you were neglecting the partnership that you were already in. You were sending messages out to this king of stars, king of wands. I feel like this king of wands, as you were sending out messages, I don't think. Give me more than nine of cups. I don't think they were as receptive to you. It's almost like uh, when they say the grass isn't greener on the other side. So in like a past life, it's almost like. 
you fucked a good thing up or you fucked up something with a strong soulmate because it really doesn't get into y'all's relationship to let me know if it was pleasurable, if it was great. But all I can see is that it was something that was stable because it's the four stars and there was love there. It was a soulmate relationship and it came to an end so you could chase after the king of stars, right? So you go after the king of stars. The king of stars, I don't feel like... Give me more on the king of stars. I don't feel like the king of stars is too worried about you in this past life. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so this is this is kind of what happened, guys. So it's like you you dipped out on the soulmate, on the twin flame, whatever it was, your your state, your stability. This was someone that was going to bring stability or brought stability into your life. You caused the death and dipped out on this person to go chase after this king of stars. Now, when you got to, or not even, I don't know if you actually were able to form a relationship with this king of stars, but it looks like. Your, life, your lesson in the past was that if something comes easy to you, like this four stars partnership, like it just seemed to, like the four stars just molds together. Like, oh, we just get each other. Like, this is this is simple. This isn't really no work. Like, I, I just got this connection with you for like no reason. But it works and we can build on it from here and, you know. But it, it's something that was easily, it just kind of mailed it together. You actually left the thing that was easy and mailed it together easy to go chase after something that you ended up having to put in a lot of work to. A lot of fucking work. It, it, this could have even been a, a third party situation as well because I'm seeing three people. So let's say you left a, a solid partnership to go deal with someone and when you got there, they were dealing with someone or once you, maybe they weren't dealing with someone initially, but once you guys got deeper into the relationship, they ended up cheating on you with a third party. This caused the tower moment and left you, I feel like filling your cup, like left you in a state of really having to figure things out, probably drinking a bit, but I feel like really having to like, like check yourself. I think in the past life, you actually did check yourself. I don't feel like, cause look in this life, I think your, your karma would be a lot more harsh if you never checked yourself in the past. I think you're catching karma and learning things, but I don't think it's nothing like if you would have never been like, damn, I should have never did this shit and thought about it. So in the past life, this really humbled you when this happened. This made you sit the fuck down. You feel me? Like, damn, what the fuck? I fucked up. And it started a new beginning. And I feel like that new beginning was really just you being more humble. What was the new beginning? Like, you not taking things for granted. You not uh, neglecting people because maybe they didn't have that spark that you were looking for. Or, you know, like, like, like I said, you're humble. You have become humble. And look, as you become humble, guess what you do? You're wearing the same exact clothes that you are wearing when you were with this partner. So I feel like this, this this partner that you were with, they were a very humble person. And they humbled you a lot of times. You know, I feel like you guys lived a simple life. That's what I'm trying to say. You guys lived a simple life. It wasn't a lot of glitz and glamour. Now, this king of motherfucking stabs, I feel like he possessed more of the glitz and glamour that you wanted. So, that's why you made that decision to chase after that glitz and glamour. Maybe they had more money, more financially stable. But once it turned out that way... To where you didn't receive your happiness. It was too much work. Possibly a third party got intertwined in there. The tower came down. And you were left with heavy burdens. And I feel like a lot of these heavy burdens were more so just about the decisions that you even made to get to this point. So now what, what was my viewer supposed to learn from this? Let's see that. What were you supposed to learn? What, are, what from In this lifetime, what are you supposed to get out of this? Mmm, death. Okay, why is the death card here? I feel like this is, uh, let me hold up before I say anything. Okay, this is, uh, basically in the past life, and now this is the cool part about past lives. Like, you get the reset, so we don't get born remembering all the lessons from the past. It would be like a cheat code. No, it's, uh, the best example I could bring up is, uh, Chris Rock's Down to Earth. I love this movie. It's one of the best fucking movies if we're talking about past lives. If you guys really want to understand past lives, 
go look at that movie in Karmic Debts. Chris Rock, he dies. He was, uh, he dies as, I think, let's say his name was Chris Rock because he was virtually himself. So he, he, uh, was going to be on the Apollo, whatever. He gets hit by a bus and he gets killed. Now, he was never going to make it to the Apollo as the person he was anyway because he sucked. He wasn't a good comedian. I mean, he always got booed. They called him Booey. That was his name. They called this motherfucker Booey because he got booed so much. But in his heart, he knew that his destiny was actually to be on the Apollo show, you know, Showtime at the Apollo and to become a famous comedian. So even though Booey couldn't do it, the soul within Bowie, because remember, this is just our flesh body. This Jen Davis, Jen Ether is not who I really am. It's who I am for this present moment. But once I pass on, my soul leaves this. And then if I come back, my soul gets put into another body. That person might be Sarah. It might be Mike. It might be, I mean, we don't know who it's going to be. You feel me? But in this particular movie, he gets killed. The angels tell him, we're going to hook you up, bro. We're going to get you a new body. They give him Mr. Oh, and before he died... He saw a woman. Her name was Santi. And he just, he only got like really one glimpse at her. But the connection was so fucking strong that he knew who she was. Like, it was like in the movie when he sees her, like, you could see that glimmer. Like, even in both eyes, I don't even think they spoke, but you could see the connection. Then he gets hit by a bus, I think, trying to speak to her. He gets hit by a fucking bus. So then he gets this body of Mr. Wellington. Mr. Wellington is a fat white guy, rich as fuck, totally different than uh, Bowie was. He's not built to be a comedian. But anyway, the main purpose of this is, is he had to, now as, as Mr. Wellington, he was aware that he was still Bowie. He knew who he was. They told him, and he, the reason why he knew is because that body of Mr. Wellington was only temporary. Because when he got in that man's body, he was mad as hell. Like, what the fuck? I can't do shit because he's trying to be a comedian. Like, I can't be a comedian like this. This is not funny. This is, like, no one's going, you know, in Showtime at the Apollo, that's a black audience. So he's like, I can't be no rich white man. Everyone hated Mr. Wellington. He was like Donald Trump. You know what I mean? So that's like, you dying. I'm a rap artist. It's like me, uh... They accidentally killed me, the, the spirit guys. And then they're like, oh, we made a mistake. We got to get you another body. Oh, Donald Trump's due to die in 10 minutes. Let's just put you in here right now. It's a loner. That's what they call it. So how am I going to do my rap career as Donald Trump? It's not going to work. You feel me? It's never going to work. So in the process of this, though, Mr. Wellington ends up coming in contact with the Santee woman, doing business together, and they still have that thing. Why? Because his soul is, he's not Mr. Wellington, he's Bowie. And that woman is that woman. So, bang, to make a long story short, at the end of the movie, they finally find this motherfucker a body. You know what I mean? They find it's perfect for his act and everything. So they finally find him a body, and he did not want to go because he he built this relationship with the woman as Mr. Wellington. And yeah, it wasn't uh it wasn't ideal for him to be Mr. Wellington. He like I said, he was a big why well, he was literally just a and there's nothing wrong with being a big white guy. I'm not saying it like that, but to be a smaller black guy from the hood and then be put into a rich, bigger white guy who's, you know, totally different than you, it was a stretch. But because he had Santi and he, he didn't think that shit would work. I think the career was even starting to work out a little bit for him and everything. So he was actually getting everything that he really wanted. And then they come and tell him, like, Chris, we got a body for you, booey. So he's like, what the fuck? No. And the, the catch-22 of this was, now when we give you this body... Because it's your permanent body, just as we spoke about what happens when we die and come back. Because they gave him a permanent body, they let him know, like, you're not going to remember this. You're not going to remember me, the angel, giving you this body. You're not going to remember ever being Bowie. You're not going to remember ever being Mr. Wellington. And the last thing he said is, what about Santi? Will I remember Santi? Like, you're not going to remember shit, bro. So, bang, he gets the new body. He was upset about this, but he had to. So, oh, in fact, he didn't have no choice because they killed Mr. Wellington. So, <laughs> this is spoilers alert. So, uh, hopefully y'all did, did see this movie. But anyway, he didn't have a choice. So, he ends up waking up with his new body. And this is the end of the movie. And what happens? He runs into the girl and that same spark is there. That same spark. Like, oh, shit. And I think they end up, you know, you see them kind of going off. So, I tell that story to let you know that through all of those lives, because you got to think about it. We just, Chris Rock technically went through three lives. He went through the life as himself, Bowie. Then he got into Mr. Wellington's body. And then the last body was the body he got to keep. 
and he didn't get to remember, or let's just say he, because he did get to remember some stuff, but at the end, he did, everything got wiped clear, but no matter what, Santi is an important player, the woman, because she was oblivious to all of it. She never knew about Bowie. She never knew that Wellington was Bowie. And she never knew that this guy is the dude that she made the glimpse at and saw got hit by the bus and is Mr. Wellington. But when she met him at the end, she said, you seem something about you seems familiar. And it's about a week after Mr. Wellington dies. You feel me? So it's like the soul always recognizes the soul. That's why they call it soul recognition. A soulmate will always recognize a soulmate. So what the lesson was for you is to put a death to chasing things that really ultimately won't serve you and learn to recognize when the soulmate is right in front of your face or when you have your soulmate. You know what I mean? So give me more on this death card, please. That was a long way to say that. Yeah, you learn not to make shit hard. Every This shit's not that hard. Like, even for me, like, a lot of my friends that I have, they're ultimate soulmates. I picked them out when I was a kid. Like, all my friends I have, I've had since I was, like, 13, my fucking... 14. You know what I mean, when we're, when we're still in that energy, that loving energy. So I picked these. It wasn't hard for me to figure out my best friend. It wasn't hard for me to pick none of these motherfuckers. It was that soul recognition. Like, oh, I resonate with you. Bang, you. Oh, I resonate with you. And that's how we should be picking our mates. Not off of, oh, they got that shiny coin. No, 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 no. So that's what you learned to put it in to like even putting yourself in burdensome situations from not following your instincts. From not following the soul recognition that you get. From just going out into... Uh, or basically from not being illuminated enough about yourself. And about what resonates with you. Uh, there's a, a, a masterclass episode that I'm doing. I believe it is... Les Brown's episode. Which is going to be episode 3 of my masterclass. It will be dropping very soon, guys. I'm doing all the editing right now. But he talks about... You got to do what resonates with you. Because that's the shit that works. The things that resonate with you work because it's the thing that your soul was meant to do. So that's what you learned. And that's what you're continuing to learn in this lifetime. So the main purpose or purpose of this story is to like forget that person. Forget if you're chasing someone right now. Let's say you're, let's say you're interested in someone. But they're not interested in you. And let's say this is actually the person that you were in a divine counterpart or a partnership with in your past life. Y'all are soulmates, right? But in, if, in this life, if they're not interested in you or doing or feeling the same way, then you already learned in the past life not to chase. I don't give a fuck if this is actually the person that you left to go chase some shit. You still learned not to do that. You already learned not to do that. So no matter what, that was the main lesson. Not to chase, do what resonates. Do the things that actually seem to come easy to you. The thing that the universe is drawing into your life, you know? Look, cut off karmic ties with karmic people. So if you guys are dealing with someone uh, where you're trying to fit a triangle into a square, you're trying to fit a motherfucking a square into a rectangle... That might work, but it won't fit fully. I mean, even that, like, okay, it fits a little bit, but there's still all this space that ain't, yeah, you know I mean, fitting. Like, no, no, no. This is what they wanted you to learn is to do things that naturally flow to you. Past life regression will be useful. Also, past life regression. So you guys, I feel like uh, this is coming out to let you guys know that you may want to actually get a past life reading. Uh, you could do past life regression as well through meditation, through meditation, but it takes some time, especially if you guys aren't uh, deep into meditating, but you could meditate, like just start meditating and you can get images from your past life. Now you may not know, but even with this reading coming up, you may know, you know what I mean? We just did a reading. So you may see certain images where it's like, damn, I think this was relating back to that reading. So it were dreams. If you get any dreams about like a space where it's like, it was familiar, but it wasn't familiar. Write that shit down. Keep a dream book so you can write it down. Cause this is a past life regression. What else will be useful for my people? Give me one more card. Clean and cleanse your space. 
So this is for my people that uh, just got out of relationships. Maybe you were with someone and the shit just wasn't clicking. They want you to definitely clean and clear your space out. You know what I mean? Clean and clear your space out. Uh, this could be vinegar and water, salt water and vinegar mixed together. Mop, open your windows, get that energy out. As you're pouring your ingredients into your bucket, into your mop water, you're, pour, you're actually saying the intentions, I'm cleansing my home from any negative energies, any unwanted energies that were residing here. They will be cleansed out with this mopping. You know I mean, they will be released through the window. <laughs> you feel me? So that's what those are the things that you want to do. Also, a spiritual bath or shower. I don't have a tub. Yeah, I mean, I got I got a walk-in shower. So what I'm gonna start doing is just lighting up sage. Like my bathroom gets super steamy. So light up the sage, close the door, and let that shit just permeate my very small bathroom. It's like a sauna, yo. So just let that shit permeate and meditate while I'm in there. And that's what I'm going to do. So for those of you who don't have the tub, you can do something with the shower. You know what I mean? But yeah, this was your reading. Clean and cleanse your space. Past life regression will be useful. So if you guys want to uh, get in touch with me for, for a past life reading, just hit me up. I will send you all the information needed. And we can go from there. And also they want you to cut off karmic ties with karmic people. What does this mean? Anyone that's a triangle and you're a square and that shit just ain't fitting. No matter how you try to push it, you jamming shit up. The triangle corners is now bent because you done try to push it into that square. No, let that shit go. All right. All right, family. I'll be posting this on to each of my platforms. Much love, fam. I'm out. Peace.